Hi, good evening. Welcome to Boiler House Jazz Live online. This is the first uh, event of the autumn season, 2021. And hopefully next spring it will be a different thing where we'll be able to bring you here to watch the show. Um, tonight we have uh, an incredible duo, Jenny Herzog and James Hieselwood, Hieselwood Dale. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different than it usually goes. It's actually going to be two shorter sets, and we're going to have a discussion in the middle where the artist will be interviewed by the person standing to my right. This is Daniel Gerwitz. 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 I knew I would get it wrong. Uh, Daniel's been a veteran uh, freelance journalist. He used to write for the Boston Herald. He's done a lot of different things, including a piece on Jenny last October, I believe, in the uh, Boston Globe. So uh, anyway, uh, I'll stop talking now, and here are Jenny and James. Gazing at stars Hearing guitars Like someone in love Lately the things I do astound me Mostly Whenever you're around me Lately I seem to walk as though I had wings bump into things like a someone in love. Each time I look at you, I'm limp as a glove and feeling like someone. Yeah, 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 but 
Lately, I find myself out gazing at stars, hearing guitars like some one in love. And the things I do, they astound me. Mostly, whenever you're around me, lately I seem to walk as though I had wings. I keep bumping into things like someone in love. Each time I look at you, I'm limp as a glove. And feeling like someone, feeling like someone, feeling like someone in love. All right, this is James Dale. I'm Jenny Herzog. Wherever you are out there, thank you for coming. That was like someone in love. And now we're going to go into one that James found um, called The Waking by Kurt Elling. I wake to sleep and take my waking slow. I feel my fate in what I cannot feel. I learn by going where. Think by feeling what is there to know. I hear my being dance from me to ear. I wake to sleep and take my waking slow. Of those so close beside me, which are you? God bless the ground, I shall walk softly there and learn by going where I have to go. takes the tree but who can tell us how how the lowly worm climbs up the winding stair I wake to sleep I wake to sleep I wake to sleep and take my waking has another thing to do with you and me. 
So take the lovely air and lovely learn by going where I have.
That was Caravan by Hobim, and uh, we took it there. Cool. All right. Next, we're going to do a little medley. I think you need this, right? Yes. So one of these I wrote, and one of them I didn't, and you can decide for yourselves. <laughs> They have a common theme, and I won't say any more than that. Mean to me, why must you be mean to me? Gee, honey, it seems to me you love to see me crying. I stay home each night when you say you'll phone. You don't, dear, and I'm left alone. Singing a blues and crying, you treat me coldly. Each day of the year, you never hold me whenever somebody is near, dear. It must be great fun to be mean to me. You shouldn't, for can't you see what you mean to me? For that I Stay home. 
home each night when you say you'll phone you don't dear and I'm left alone treat me coldly each day of the year you always scold me whenever somebody is near dear it must be Great fun to be mean to me. Gave it all, no part of me too small, and still you went from my bed right to hers, blanket to a flame. You smother and you shame, you dampen my daydreams. So all I dreamt was you. by cafe I asked what you thought you grabbed my face and kissed all my cares away each time we quit I look back your eyes are still lit how can it be that 
that love destroys what's free cities apart you're still in my heart rigid and wrong we can't get along you dampened dreamer please destroy We met in fall. I remember thinking that your denim jacket was buttoned up. Then I saw your face. I asked what you thought. But Look back, your eyes are still lit. How can it be that love destroys what's free? Cities apart, you're still in my heart. Rigid and wrong, we can't get along. You dampened dreamer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> that was mean to me and please destroy me. Themes of destruction and anger tonight for you all. Followed by another one, sort of. I don't know where it is. Don't go. This is another original. We're going to go for it on this one. Hmm? As opposed to the other ones. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
me, I will remind you that you've always been my guy. And you can't change that. It's your fate. You're under my control now. So don't go. So but it did do do Don't go now, jump it up.
you want it and more I'll be sweet just like a lady Rage and madness all for you And you can't change that It's your fate, you're under my control Now, so don't go So, but do 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 don't go. Don't go now. Dip it to pa pa da do do. Pa pa da pa pa do do. Da da pa pa do do. Pa pa da pa pa you and me and half of we, half of what we used to be. If you like, I'll stay for tea. Maybe this is a good time for the interview. What do you think? Or should we do one more? All right, let's do it. Don't fall. So I have, I have a question that I don't think you want to answer, Jenny, which is basically, after seeing you tap dance and sing together, my question is, why is this woman not world famous? Oh. <laughs> you, you, you I can't can, answer that. I mean, can you answer that? I don't think that the general mass public is particularly intrigued by what I do, to be Can honest. Well, I think it's apparent. <laughs> but yeah. thank you, I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> I didn't really expect a serious answer to that. Okay. Um, I, I have never seen, I've seen musicians smile and laugh at somebody's solo, but I don't think as often or as, or as gloriously as you did. <laughs> you really are, you know, it's like you're both turned on by each other. Yeah, I'm not laughing at Jenny to mock her in any way. No, no, I no, should no, emphasize no. that. It's the way <laughs> musicians sometimes. do it. Like, <laughs> it's witty. It's delightful. You know, she does some funny things sometimes, and <laughs> I can't help but laugh. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I'm that way with any musician who has mm -hmm. a personality. Sorry, that sounds rude, too. Um, when their personality comes through in the music, let's say that. Right. So... A devil may care quality. Right, because Jenny's hilarious as a human being. Oh, we're standing on this side, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just over here now. Oh, okay. And so I feel like that really comes across in her music. When I appreciate it when he performing. laughs because it means he's recognizing something I'm doing and sure. we're there together, yeah. It's an ultimate uh, affirmation. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, unless it's a fugue and then you might <laughs> worry yeah, a right. bit. <laughs> so, uh, obviously you come from Australia, and I was wondering if that influenced your knowledge or just enjoyment of world music. Hmm, that's a good question. I'm not sure if my parents As are watching. As opposed to, let's say, coming from <laughs> Peoria, Illinois. Oh. You know? Yeah. Okay, I mean, the interesting thing about the current state of jazz, and it's been this way for a while, as I'm sure you know, as I'm sure many people watching know, but it's really uh, about immersing yourself in the records in a community that's going to support you. So even though I come from the other side of the world, there are a lot of fantastic musicians in Sydney, and my interest in world music, I guess I didn't really answer your question, but... 
<laughs> You're closer to for, Asia than For we me, are. technically, jazz is kind of a world music, like from mm. the Australian perspective, right? Because I'm not American. And so if we're using the, the term world music and meaning the musical culture other than the one that you mm -hmm. grow up in, then technically jazz is that because we didn't really have jazz. I said there's a lot of great jazz musicians, but I, that's, that's an American art form. But in terms of the Asian population and the sort of Asian culture and, and musical culture for that matter, I actually have to say that I spent most of my time in Australia playing jazz. <laughs> so I didn't really mm -hmm. get into that, that side of things. But now that I've moved to Boston, this is my sixth year, I seem to meet people from everywhere else. So now, ironically, I've really gotten into quote unquote world music uh, from all over the place. Uh, Makes sense. Yeah. Boston's a very multicultural city, of course, and Berkeley's this hub of people, amazing people from all over the place, as is NEC. Uh, and I just feel like Boston has a very international music scene, and that really is reflected in the very musics that we end up playing as musicians in Boston. Now, starting off with, did you start off with tap dancing before singing? No. I started tapping when I was 13. Shout out to Susan Filippiak, my first tap dance teacher, who I believe is watching. Um, mm. But I started singing when I was very little. I wanted to be a Broadway star. And then I quickly realized that wasn't going to happen. So my two loves were like singing and tap. Started singing, then I started tapping, and then I realized that they could be integrated and they have a history of integration. So. And how did that happen? Did you? Did you uh, get to the point when you could dance and sing in the same song quickly, or was that a slow-going operation? Yeah, well, I didn't really think of it for many years because they were very compartmentalized, especially in the way that I studied music. Mm -hmm. You know, I did um, singing and musical theater and choir and a cappella. Shout out to the Westermans and Mrs. Baxter. Sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> Um, my first music teachers are watching. Ah. Um, so I started off, you know, singing and doing theater and then taking tap classes. And then, and then you know, I, I dabbled in opera, kept doing theater, and then they kind of fall, fell away one at a time. And then as I learned more about the history of tap dance, I learned that it was very closely integrated to jazz and live music and big mm -hmm. bands and such. And so as I was happening to be singing more jazz, I realized that the two pretty seamlessly just fit together. But I didn't think about it for probably 10 years until I got to that point. And since tap is often with traditional, well, swing jazz and, and older styles of jazz and melodic jazz, um, did you, uh, I, I, I know that you're also a, a, you know, a student of the, of the original African-American practitioners of the art. So did you take, take a while to get, to get copacetic with modern styles? <laughs> By modern styles, you do mean? Meaning like modern jazz and, and avant-garde and moments and you know, just things that aren't Not swing. traditional swing. Yeah, I mean. It's interesting because, so you said copacetics. The copacetics yeah. were this group of um, mostly African-American tap dancers and musicians in Harlem. And then their students um, were my teachers. So I'm like two generations down from the copacetics. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, my tradition is like largely steeped in like swing, big band, that kind of phrasing, but also bebop. Um, and, but my dad plays a lot of very strange like a tonal free <laughs> improvisation stuff. So I grew up listening to that while he played. So I had like the two in my ear. And so when I got to NEC, people were doing all kinds of music. I just experimented with integrating tap into as many situations as I could. So that, I mean, I think the most natural thing for me is still swing and sure. more traditional phrasing. But yeah, I definitely got to experiment with a lot. Well, vocally, it's experimental. It's kind of like Betty Carter in her mid-period a little bit. Sure, yeah. I love her. And she got even <laughs> further out there. So, James, uh, did you uh, get into different styles of jazz, you know, one step at a time, or were you always into, you know, sort of the, the, the modern period? Yeah, great question. Or the postmodern period. The, right, right. Which period should we pick? Um, so we have a joke 
back in Australia about my conservatory, I assume no one's actually watching from my old conservatory, so I don't mind. They could. Say they could be Conceivably. Okay, but, but, <laughs> They'd be sleeping. Um, well, it's not, it's not actually a, a bad thing necessarily, but we would call it the crotchet factory. Crotchet being quarter note. That's, meaning that <laughs> in the jazz program, we would just swing all day and every day. And we would, hmm. It wouldn't touch any other styles of jazz. You know, we'd stick in the sort of bop era, if, you, if that sure. makes sense. So... I still, I, I want to go back to what I said when I moved to Boston. It was really then in this city that I started exploring other styles of music, really. Other styles, other periods of jazz and just, uh, yeah, just other genres as a whole. So again, yeah. Sydney was just playing quarter notes, walking bass. Well, that's bass. interesting. <laughs> so that's the... To hearing about that because uh, I once met Charlie Watts and... Uh, he was with his jazz band at the time at the Montreal Jazz Festival. And those guys and all the bands like them were doing like note for note from 1946 Charlie Parker records. It, <laughs> right, was, kind of, right. it was kind of bizarre. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are certainly pockets of, Austra of the Australian music scene that are interested in the New York contemporary sound. Uh, but I just found myself as a bass player playing quarter notes. So, anyway, I mean, even there's a traditional jazz scene, you know, going back to the 1920s and 30s mm -hmm. uh, in Australia. But As I, in England. Uh, right, right. But I just didn't have anything to do with that. I was just... <laughs> well, you didn't play tuba either. Project. I didn't play tuba, no. <laughs> no. So tuba was the, the first jazz bass. Uh, right, yeah, for absolutely. For those of you who yeah. didn't get that semi-joke. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, w w what is it like uh, uh, being a bassist, being like, it's like the ultimate complementary instrument beyond drums, of course, that also doesn't usually play with other, alone, I mean, and, and so n doing a solo piece, was that something that came slowly to you? Was it like years of fooling around and finally you were ready for the stage? <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I'm a, a huge fan of Dave Holland, and he has a number of mm. fantastic solo double bass records. So when I was studying at New England Conservatory, he was a visiting professor, and I think just having those few lessons, and he would he would make the bass teach uh, bass students, excuse me, at at NEC perform solo pieces. So I mm -hmm. think just doing that in front of Dave was nerve wracking, but it was inspiring at the same time, and really thinking about oh, how would you actually do that? And Dave is such a master at that, so he would actually relay some of his tactics how to, you know, do that. Um, and to be honest, I mean, not to uh, make fun of drummers, but I'll do it anyway, because I can. Um, so often, when we're soloing, we're just left with the higher... So really, we're playing solo bass solos all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, unless yeah. you really tell someone, or if there's someone who's courteous and wants to accompany you. But for the most part, I, I, I find uh, that I'm accompanying myself anyway. Well, you must have been nervous the first time, like thinking the audience was going to say, get the trumpet back on. Yeah, Come right, on. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's going on? The music's quieter. <laughs> I guess speaking, we can talk. I guess we can talk now. coming back on, I, I think it's time for you to oh. do another song. Okay. If you're well, ready. Nice. Do another song you okay, yeah, speaking of bass solos, I'm going to do a, a solo bass piece now. Watch out, watch out. Ooh. And... This is a melody composed by the great Johnny Hodges. It's uh, listed as a composition by Duke Ellington, but Johnny Hodges is responsible for this beautiful melody.
This is taken from a very famous verse. <laughs> Sorry, we're going to make up this verse right now.
wondering what this could be. Frozen in time this evening. Sunny side, eggs on the top. Heartstrings dancing, they never stop. Dip me sideways around. Let's not make a sound. I come tomorrow when we wake up, we'll be wondering if we'd imagined the whole scene. You serve wine to strangers today. Snow is melting as I drive away. We place in some far off cafe. What did we have? What did we lose? On that imagined ba 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 da day and a ba ba da day and a ba da day. Thank you. That was Imagine Day. Another one of mine. Let's do another one. great room. You can't see it, but there's very high ceilings and it's very echoey. <laughs> yeah. How about Cherokee? This is the blues.
Yeah, it's been eight o'clock for a long time. We've been looking at this clock. Ten, so do we have time for one more? One more, two more, three, whatever, okay. Cherokee, caravan, yeah. All right, we got one more, I think. Here we go. Thank you to John Bouchard, thank you to the Charles River Museum of Innovation and Industry for having us in this amazing space. Thank you to James for playing with me. Here we go. And thank you to Daniel for interviewing us. <laughs> oh, we were gonna do a flamenco vibrato intro. above that shine so bright the mystery of our fading light that shines upon our caravan sleep upon my shoulder as we creep across the sand so I may keep this memory of our caravan this is so exciting you are so inviting, resting in my arms as I thrill to the magic charm of you beside me here beneath the blue. My dream of love is coming true inside my desert caravan. Bom, 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 bom,
of our fading light that shines upon a caravan. Sleep upon our shoulder as we creep across the sand so I may keep this memory of our caravan. This is so exciting. You Charms of you beside me here beneath the blue. My dream of love is coming true. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks to everyone who tuned in. Thank you, James. Thank you, Museum. Here's John Bouchard and Daniel. Thank you. You two uh, just have creative juices that flow off each other, and it's just really tremendous. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I don't have a lot of questions, but I do want to make, uh, read off a comment because it's nice to have some feedback when you don't have a, um, a live audience. Uh, and I'm flipping between, I guess I'm supposed to move up here. Is that better? Uh, I'm supposed to read off the stuff from both YouTube and Facebook, so it's kind of uh, complicated. But anyway, Susan Philippiak? Ah, she says, go, 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 Jenny and James. And I think that's probably the sentiment of a lot of people that watch tonight. Okay. Uh, Thanks, Susan. <laughs> there was a question about a particular song, and I think it was the one that had Meadowlock in it. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Moonlight in Vermont. Moonlight in Vermont. So there you go, Tia. It was Moonlight in Vermont. And I should have known that. <laughs> um, it is important for you all to uh, make some donations. So uh, that supports both the artist and it supports the museum. So there have been links sent in the comments section in both Facebook and YouTube. So look at that and please donate because it is important. Um, James, I mean, sorry, Daniel. <laughs> Can I'm you add anything here? <laughs> Uh, I was thinking the of uh, a, uh, a quote from Jenny. It's become a world-famous quote because it's been in the Boston Globe and WBUR, so semi-famous, um, which is that you can't be unhappy while you tap dance, or it's hard to be. It's so I'm impossible. Wondering, it's, I'm wondering about can you be sad tap dancing and singing a sad song? <laughs> Um, Can the audience feel sad or are oh they wow. just happy? That was a stumper. Well, I felt that. Well, you know, it's about the I person doing the dancing, not the audience. So, if I was singing a sad song while tap dancing, could I be sad? That's the question. Yeah, yeah or that's could a good you, question. I could don't you know. portray sadness? Well, I could portray it. I don't know if it'd be authentic because I'd be so happy because I would be tap dancing. And there's something about tap dancing that is inherently joyful. And if you've dance. never tried it, it's never too late. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so basically, 
I guess I'm asking for the, about the dramatic potential of tap dancing. It's some of the moves you make are not typical at all. Oh, certainly, yeah. But ultimately, it's joyful. I definitely think tap dance as a form has the capacity to portray many emotions. I think that the dancer, while doing it, will feel a deep sense of joy. So you could feel joyful but portray a range of emotions, I think. And in fact, even with a tragic ballet, you feel good that artistry is coming to its full <laughs> flower. Sure, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Just a couple more comments fresh in. <laughs> uh, Gretchen says, bravo to you both. I loved hearing you again. Jenny, and love your musical energy and the musicianship of your duo. <laughs> Thank you, Gretchen. And uh, wonderful to watch you both performing and grooving from Marsha Rotundo. Okay. Thank you, everybody. So uh, I think that concludes the evening, but um, I do want to give you information on the next uh, Boiler House Jazz Show, if I can get it here on my phone. It's exactly two weeks from today, and uh, it's really hard to get at this, but anyway, it's Lori Zorf and Witness Matlu. Witness Matlu is a South African uh, jazz pianist. Lori Zorf. Go Witness. <laughs> uh, so that's, that'll be two weeks from today. I think that's October 2nd, but check your calendar to be sure. It is two weeks from today. So thank you again for tuning in, and I'm sure there weren't many comments because you were so focused on the performance. Um, all right, good evening. Thanks, John. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Museum. Thanks, everybody. Bye.